Hey guys, so I've got a little bit of time tonight. Got a new fresh haircut. It's a little bit chilly here in Joburg. So I just wanted to show you guys what I'm busy with. I'm busy assembling the NA block, NA head that we've done some forged internals, or it's getting forged internals. And I just wanted to show you what to do with the crank and the steps. Maybe it helps somebody out. You can see how I build the, the engines. Alright, so what I'm going to show you guys is just the assembly of this uh, NA block. And we've basically just a couple of tips how to put it together and stuff that you might have to, that you want to look at for. Alright, so you see this is the NA block, no oil squirters on this side. So just the interesting fact, what I normally do, take out the ball bearings that's in there, get yourself a grub screw, um, I'm going to see what size this is, we'll have a look at that now, and a tap that goes with it. So tap it before you clean it. Just interesting, so on the GTE blocks, uh, this there's a, you see this uh, oil passage that runs through from that side to there. Basically for your oil squirters on the GE or the NA, it's not, this is planked off. You don't need to open this. So it's basically a dead end. You only open this and clean this one out. And obviously with your paraffin gun, you're going to clean from your mains. You'll see that it all gets cleaned. This has been to the engineer for line hone. Um, as you can see, I've cleaned so what I've done is I'm not very really happy with it after two and a half thousand rand comes back. Um, you know, I still had to clean all the the caps and um, the caps at the bottom wasn't cleaned properly. There you see I've sanded them down. I uh, used the ball gauge. So <clears throat> invest in one of these if you do put your engine together because... You can double check everything the engineer does. So it came back. I wasn't very happy with it. Um, from side to side, going this way, it was 0 0.03 and uh, up and down uh, vertical 0 0.05. So in my opinion, it should be nice and round. Uh, you should clean the caps up first, you know, then line hone it right through. Any case, I don't know what they charged me for, but that's uh, just going to give you guys a couple of tips. So, on the standard cranks, you will basically see you've got different bearings. You see I wrote, that's a 2 and a 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, etc. So, each main has basically got a um, bearing. I want to show you. At the back of the bearing, you see there's number two. Just focus there quick. All right, you see there's a two or a three. So I wrote down the sizes here. So normally you will buy aftermarket bearing. It will be standard. It will be 1.99. Okay, that's a standard size bearing. So aftermarket bearings you can only when buy from Toyota. You can buy different sizes. So standard bearing, 9 out of 10 times, it's a 1.99. A number 2 bearing like this, uh, 9 out of 10 times is a 2. A number 3 varies. So these two you might vary um, to get to 0 0.01. This is millimeters. And then the 4, you're basically, if you're lucky, going up to 0 0.2. But in any case, that's the standard that you'll get on that. It's like 150 uh, uh, bigger than that size so between that you can fine tune your oil sizes um, you can even mix the bearings if you've got a standard uh, and a number two and you know you want to uh, just bring half of that down you could swap the bearing one half a number two other half a number three cool so that's a little bit of info there for you um then what I've done is after, before I cleaned them, I just took, uh, just to double check if I do have the right clearances, I plastic gauge every main. And there you can see, basically, uh, to double check if we've got the right oil clearance. So on my, let's have a look there, 0 0.38, so almost uh, 0 0.4. I cleaned the caps up a little bit, so I should be 
at the lower part going down to 0 0.25 right in between the two I'm hoping to get a little bit less clearance but in any case so a little bit uh, fatter we need to get a little bit bigger there 0 0.25 or 0 0.3 that's what I'm hoping for so just for uh, as an interesting fact that's what I do I normally take a file and just to make sure there's no rough balls or edges sitting on these sometimes you find a little lip maybe you can see on that one there where that was machined there's a little lip and sometimes that can cause your clearances to be out um, so taking a little file you can see they've filed if I can give you a better view on that the rest is a little bit more dirty there's a good example you see so running that you see where the little high spots were on that so just to get that centered and better you see this block's also been deburred so this is basically being ready to be assembled and yeah then we're going over to the head um, I need to get some uh, pipe cleaners just to clean out the valve stem seals but these are brand new valves that came with this Look, you've still got the machining mark. Brand new second hand. Let me see if I can show you. Come on, zoom there. Ah, doesn't want to. But in any case, so these these were still pretty new. Ah. Yeah, so you can't see that. But in any case, these valves are pretty new. I'm going to reshim the head and make sure that everything is in spec. But... For now, no valve stem seals. Um, if you look at where the valve is seating, it's a little it's a little wide. Uh, but for the turbo application, I don't think we need to cut it. Um, I'm just going to lap it, put it together. Standard valves, standard GTE cams going into this small modification that you have to do on the uh, VVTi side. You have to cut a little bit bigger the cam. So it fits in. So then you've got a nice profile for your valves. And the valve springs, you'll see these valve springs are basically blue. And then the turbo ones have got a yellow marking. So that's interesting. Uh, so the yellow ones will go in there. And we'll put that all together. And then I just wanted to show the guys that don't know. If your crank needs a light polish, get a little piece of sandpaper. Sand it down to uh, this size so it fits over and uh, let me show you a little piece of cloth that goes around it let me set that up and show you guys what that looks like okie dokies let's have a look at this so get your paper wrap it around ah, let's do it on this journal so not a journal big end just hold the paper there wrap this around make sure Goes around twice, once, twice, there you go. And that's it. That's the easiest way to get this polished. And uh, yeah, I normally use just a, not water, just a little bit of paraffin or even just Q20. Once you eat it like that a couple of times, yeah, this thing comes out super shiny. Hopefully we can show you. Yeah, super shiny. Boom, and that's ready for our bearing. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you guys. These were the bearings that came out of this NA. So these are, look at that. So you can see, you can even see this is brand spanky new. So I didn't change it. I didn't put new bearings in it. Ah, there you go. You can see the lines. That's brand spanky new. So just for the guys that are wondering how to take off... If you just to clean it up, I don't have the right machine, but this little belt sander does the job just to touch it and clean it up a little bit there, nice and square. Cleans it up, and you can, after this, I'm going to just do one plastic gauge to see. Uh, the middle one is the most difficult, but these ones we can uh, do with the dull gauge. That's what I said. This was giving me a 0 0.5, but with the plastic gauge, I don't think the plastic gauge is that accurate, a 0 0.38, but that's still perfect. So, 
uh, still good enough. So I am just cleaned it up and I'm hoping to get 0 0.38 or 0 0.3 all the way around. A little bit smaller, 0 0.25. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay, guys, hopefully that helps you. Uh, put together some good motors, man. Have a good one.